Good morning, good afternoon, and good night to everyone globally. My name is Robin Bai. I will be helping Professor Ray Huang chair this session of IU TAM. Very exciting speakers. So um, the first speaker here uh, is uh, Dr. Shouting Ling and uh, uh, Professor Xiang He Zhao from MIT. And they are going to talk about extreme properties of hydrogels by network design. So Shouting, please, the floor is yours. OK, so uh, everything looks good, right? So I'm sharing my screen. OK. Uh, thank you, Ray. Uh, thank you, uh, Robin's kind of introduction. Also, like to particularly thank uh, Ray and Xianghe for organizing such wonderful symposium. Uh, I have been truly enjoyed and learned a lot so far. So my name is Shao Ting. I'm currently working at post in uh, mechanical engineer at MIT. So in today's talk, I'm going to share some of our recent studies on how to design uh, mechanical properties of hydrogen through a uh, network level uh, understanding. So the key components of today's talk are from uh, several ongoing projects. So I won't be able to cover many of our previous work along this topic. Uh, but if you have interest, you are welcome to check our most recent review led by uh, Xuan He Zhao. We summarize a variety of network level engineering approaches to manipulate so-called unconventional polymer networks for a macroscopic property design. So here's a motivation. Uh, uh, without highlighting too much, so uh, previous speakers in, uh, uh, the, uh, in this symposium have mentioned many details on the historic development of tough hydrogels. And the development of PV hydrogels and double net hydrogels are the two historic inventions in the field. Uh, the chemistry of these two materials are quite different, but their actually tough mechanism uh, is actually universal. So the dissipation can be either achieved through melting of crystal domains or by introducing sacrificial bonds. And using the similar principle, uh, our group and also include uh, many other groups are trying to actually develop uh, strong hydrogen adhesions uh, to glass, ceramics, metals, and even human tissues. And with the development of tough hydrogen and the tough hydrogen adhesion, uh, many new applications are become possible. So in the morning session, speakers actually have introduced many interesting applications. So for example, hydrogen can be a critical part for soft robots uh, when subject to different kinds of stimuli. And the other application is by leveraging the conductivity and the stretchability of hydrogen, it can be an alternative to existing uh, stretchable uh, hydrogen, uh, uh, existing stretchable electronics, but the, the conventional common ones are made of metals. So one limiting factor for many of the applications is their lifetime. So when targeting uh, so the robots, actually the electronics, the question is how if we can actually maintain their functions for a persistent uh, long time. So the first example is very interesting. It's mentioned uh, by Martin in this morning. So the idea is to use natural rubber to develop a stretchable cooling system in the solid state. The idea is to leverage uh, this uh, snap through uh, mechanical instability and the strain induced crustacean, and then they can achieve a quite a promising cooling effect. And to further enable this prolonged cooling effect, it uh, requires a cycles inflation and deflation. And uh, we all know that natural rubber suffers fatigue. So in the paper, they also mentioned it would be desired to ensure 10 to the uh, power of uh, seven cycles uh, for commercial translation. And the other examples uh, include the vibration in transparent speakers and the different kinds of biomedical devices working in a highly dynamic human body. And these actual environments usually actually evolve a, a, a cyclic loading and large mechanical deformation. And the, the question is, can we develop something working beyond the weeks, months, and even beyond? So fatigue actually tends to be the limited factor in many cases, but it can be benign. So here's one example. So my lab mate actually, they are developing, uh, uh, so actually by harnessing this uh, fatigue indu induced interfacial delamination to assist uh, the, uh, this uh, folding process. And they found that actually uh, through subtle pressure changes, they are able to gradually weaken and deform the boundary layer of fluids. And ultimately it could be fully washed away. 
So all the problems on this application side are essentially related to fracture and the fatigue of software materials uh, sending out two quantities. So one is the fracture toughness gamma, the other is the fatigue threshold. So both of these two quantities uh, uh, are fracture in physical fracture energy, uh, but the, uh, the, the energy required for separation of a material into two or more pieces in the unit of a joule per meter square. And the two major fracture energy, uh, one needs to first measure the stress stretching curve uh, of the material uh, 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 on launch the sample and the, the integral of the stretching curve actually measuring the energy density stored in sample. And to further calculate the ability to resist this crack propagation, uh, one further needs to actually introduce a sharp crack, then you actually can introduce energy release phase. This is a loading parameter that to drive the crack propagation. So this experiment actually can be either done by this uh, monotonic loading or, or actually uh, done by the, uh, this uh, cyclic loading. Okay, so for monotonic loading uh, is measure the fracture toughness and for cyclic loading, uh, you are measuring uh, this fatigue threshold. And for this uh, uh, cyclic loading, uh, the critical loading parameter is the maximum stretch or the maximum energy release rate you are applying to the system. So these two quantities can also be understood in this plot. So let's do an imaginary experiment. So you have many samples, okay? So you may have many samples. You can measure the fracture energy of the sample on the <clears> first <throat> cycle loading. So that is fracture toughness. And the likely this fracture energy actually decrease over cycles and eventually reach a plateau value. Uh, the value actually is the fatigue threshold of the material. And the ratio of these two values defines the dimensionless parameter toughness enhancement. And in many or ma most of materials, this quantity is greater than one. So here are some interesting questions that we would like to answer. So I will mostly focus on the first two questions in today's talk. But before that, let me briefly summarize our recent efforts trying to enhance this uh, gamma knot. Uh, I think we had a quite a warm discussion in the first days of the symposium. Uh, and we had a similar discussion actually within the group quite a few years ago by reviewing and comparing these uh, material candidates. We eventually focused on PVA, uh, the symmetrical material invented by Professor Nicholas Peppers. And uh, we followed the pro fabrication protocols and we trying to find the method to uh, design these localized uh, crystal domains to pattern the crystal domains. And we also trying to rely on uh, mechanical engineering or electro spinning uh, to engineer nanofibrosing in hydrogels. So our finding is that by uh, engineering hierarchical and heterogeneous structure in PV hydrogels tends to be a quite effective approach to enhance this gamma zero. Uh, but how and what's the underlying fundamental physics behind that? Uh, we have no concrete idea yet. Uh, but to understand that, we decided to step back to focus on amorphous polymer chains in the first place. And we found actually amorphous polymer network appear to be simple though. Uh, there are still many unanswered uh, fundamental questions. The first question is related to this dimensionless uh, parameter. So this number has been uh, well understood for high hysteresis materials. So I work with Professor Ten Zhang, uh, who is currently professor at the Syracuse University. Uh, at that moment, we trying to understand how this giant hysteresis group promote this toughness enhancement. Uh, this physical picture is actually, is, I think it's the same as the urban, urban picture mentioned by Zhigong's talk uh, in the first day symposium, and there are two physical processes. So one is the fractional layer polymer chain on the crack pass. So that actually give a relatively low value, gamma zero. Okay, and beyond that, around the crack tip, there is a process zone. So the material particles or material points within the process zone will experience loading unloading process. And this loading unload pro loading process, because of this giant hysteria, they can provide a sufficient mechanical dissipation. And that contribution to toughness is linearly proportional to this enclosed area times the size of this uh, process. And the total toughness is conceptually equal to the summation of these two parts. But if we, uh, want to gain this explicit expression, uh, we need to know more information about stretch theory. And the Hob uh, Zono and the Hobbes Hui derived the many mathematical expression for different kinds of solids. So here we take the form for new hooking solid. So uh, by doing so, we can actually can extract this the size of process zone 
which is linearly proportional to this toughness over this maximal strain energy uh, uh, stored in the sample. So and then uh, finally, we can derive this equation. So here, maximal uh, H max is the maximum cases ratio uh, <coughs> stored in the sample. And the alpha is a dimensionless parameter in the range of zero to one. So this parameter uh, physically is, uh, denotes uh, the speed of the material transits into a high dissipative domain. So I think this equation is sort of appreciated in the field, but uh, we find uh, one expression, uh, ex exception. So we, we, when we carefully study Zhigong's paper, uh, we find that polycrum hydrogen is another magic material. So they are nearly elastic material, but with little stress, stress, uh, stretch hysteresis. But even that, their fracture toughness can be 10 times higher than fatigue threshold, as I highlighted by this black, uh, red brackets. So we are very excited about this uh, exception that we decided to experiment ourselves. So here's our data. We also measure our fatigue threshold is 32, is relative low. And uh, this fresh toughness actually is high, is a 500, uh, about 510 to 2 meters squared. It's actually above 10 times difference. Uh, then we further check this hysteresis uh, ratio, and we found the hysteresis actually is uh, quite low, it's below 10%. Uh, the hysteria ratio tends to be rate independent. The stress level has a slight rate dependence. And the, the, uh, the loading rate actually will vary uh, by about 10, 100 times. So then uh, recording our uh, bulk dissipation model. Uh, so here, so for since polycrimal hydro is highly stretchable, so alpha can be approximate as one. Then we uh, further substitute this H max to this equation. Uh, this toughness enhancement uh, predicted by our bulk dissipation model is only 1.1. It's very low, uh, much uh, lower than our experiments and also Chidon's experiment. Uh, so to possibly understand that, we decide to revisit polycoma hydrogels. Uh, we start to synthesize a series of PA hydrogels with the same polymer content, but a different uh, cross-linking density. So the gelation process of a PA hydrogel is an in-situ polymerization, but they start from monomer. So they can form extremely long polymer chains interconnected by these cross linkers, but these long chain polymers are passing through each other. Uh, but if you in add a lot of cross linker, what happens is uh, this chain entanglements uh, actually, uh, so these long chain polymer actually creates a lot of trapped polymer segments and the people cause chain entanglements. But if we add a lot of cross-linker cross in the system and maintain the same amount of polymers, uh, so what happens is uh, this chain can, can dramatically reduce. And uh, but uh, what should be noted that they still contain bungling chains and the cyclers. So here I summarized this uh, average chain density and the average chain, uh, average chain length and average chain density in the systems. And these two quantities actually are coupled due to the mass conservation uh, in the systems. So here are the experimental results. Uh, we first measure the toughness of the polycrum hydrogen. So as the chain length increases, the fracture toughness actually increases up to 500 to 2 meters squared. Uh, and we also measure fatigue threshold. They increase slightly with the uh, chain length. Uh, we further summarize this ratio, the ratio between the toughness and the threshold as a toughness enhancement. Uh, we see uh, a pronounced uh, increase from uh, approximately uh, 1 to 16. So this experimental data tells that for polyacrimal hydrogen with extremely long polymer chains, because of the chain entanglement, this uh, toughness is much larger than its fatigue threshold. But for uh, polyacrimal hydrogen with uh, very short polymer chains, uh, even it may contain some defects such as dangling chains, or these kind of loop defects, its toughness is still almost <coughs> nearly identical to its uh, fatigue uh, threshold. Uh, we further measure the hysteresis, and uh, we see this hysteresis is consistent below 10 uh, for different materials with different chain lengths. So we, uh, uh, then, so here is a comparison. We put, so the blue dots is the predicted toughness enhancement by bulk dissipation model, and the red dots uh, is our experiment data we see a large discrepancy, especially when the chain entanglements become pronounced in the systems. 
I think we need more data to understand the chain entanglement effects. So we further perform this uh, rheology test to characterize this uh, rate dependence. So uh, the rate dependence is less likely due to the polar elasticity as it has been explained by uh, Wei Hong in his talk because in this rheology test is a simple shear mode. So uh, there is negligible hydrostatic pressure building in the system to drive the migration of solvent. Uh, there is also unlikely uh, due to this uh, relaxation of dunkling chains because I will show some data later our data indicates that these functional chains in swollen hydrogels do not contribute to rate dependence uh, significantly. And uh, since the polyacamide is uh, synthesized by covalent cross-linking, there won't be uh, there won't be have uh, reversible bonds. So by excluding all these uh, uh, effects, we eventually conclude that it is uh, highly uh, possible due to this replication of entanglement uh, entangled polymer chains. And here also we systematically characterize this uh, this ratio uh, for unentanglement and the entanglement network. And the, we so here are some actual three observations. So the first is chain entanglement gives rate dependent modulus. So this is uh, as we show here. This slight rate dependence, but is actually consistent with our rheology test. And the chain entanglement actually does not introduce high hysteresis ratio, as I have mentioned. And the chain entanglement does not induce rate dependent hysteresis ratio. This is actually quite different from other types of uh, rate dependent materials. So our kind of understanding is as follows. So we attribute this new type of toughening mechanism to so-called near crack dissipations. So I think the physical picture should be consistent with Zhigang's uh, imperfection, JMPS paper and the Kratens PRX paper. So in Kratens paper, they clearly visualize this kind of delocalized damage in elastomer. And they show this damage can be delocalized up to 100 micrometers. And uh, so our, this is our understanding. So in more detail, so what happens is on the, at the undeformed states, the chains on the crack paths are highly entangled. But once you further load the sample and the crack start to propagate, then there are chains actually uh, in, in, so start to actually, uh, uh, these kind of pull out of chains can dissipate the mechanical energy. And if, when you further load the sample, it will crack start to propagate, so then actually, more and more chains are fractured even at adjacent layers. So this probably is uh, the same physical picture as depicted by this uh, Kratens paper because for elastomer also actually contains many entanglements. Uh, I think we still have many things to further adjust the picture, but this uh, near crack dissipation concept tend to be, can be, tend to be important because it suggests a new toughening mechanism for low hysteresis uh, materials. Uh, the finding food actually inspired us to rethink the uh, toughening mechanism in PM algae and hydrogen. Actually, I did an experiment uh, five years ago to validate the bulk dissolution model, but now I actually have some different thoughts. So, uh, so here's, uh, we, we, we actually re uh, perform these experiments. So uh, we start re -characterize. So We first measure this uh, toughness. So it's about 1,000 is high. Uh, then we also synthesize another single natural polyacrylate hydrogen, which has the same polymer content, the same cross link density. Uh, it has a relative low uh, fracture toughness. Uh, and we further carry a fatigue threshold. Actually, the fatigue threshold of both systems have uh, quite identical, but uh, this is uh, at a much lower value. So in the system, actually, there are three kinds of fracture energy in the system. So one is the total toughness. And the other uh, one is the fatigue threshold, which we understood quite well. But in between, uh, there is a, a we call it as a T fracture toughness, and which we actually is, uh, is, a, a country, is to account for this uh, uh, low hysteresis uh, near crack dissipations. So there are this kind of mechanism. Uh, <clears throat> so 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 can be actually applicable. To Potentially applicable even, let's say, double natural hydrogel elastomers, but we need some data to support that. Uh, the reason why, because for these sets materials actually inevitably contains uh, uh, chain entanglements. And uh, uh, we originally used this kind of bulk dissipation uh, model to describe the toughening magnet. So now we like to modify it in this form. So the risk ratio seems to be more complex than we expect. So the ratio of gamma for gamma zero. 
So what we have actually proposed is not gamma over the gamma, actually it's gamma over gamma t. And to account for both tuffing mechanisms, uh, we really need to introduce another parameter is the ratio between the gamma t of gamma z. So that is to account for the non theory entanglement. So the other experiment, uh, this is ongoing project. The other experiment on the list is to uh, retest and compile model in a soft material system uh, free of chain entanglements. So in that case, the fracture toughness should be, uh, uh, this tip toughness should be identical as the uh, fatigue threshold. Then our modified model will, uh, again, uh, will be reduced to go back to our original model. So we need to test that. So then this actually natu naturally brings up our second question. So can we have a stretchable polymer network that has the identical fracture toughness and the fatigue threshold? So since 1960s, people start to measure fatigue threshold for elastomers. And the, the most recently, Qigong's group initiated the field of fatigue hydrogels. Uh, and amount of all the reported materials, uh, to the, my knowledge, none of them have the identical fracture toughness and the fatigue threshold. And the question is why we are so eager for such material system. So here's the reason. Uh, we need to start with a relatively ideal and a simple material system uh, as an experimental platform. So that can be explained by theory and thereby can further inform new mechanics. So for example, how to probe a bond energy uh, how to probe with chain fracture and then eventually how to relate to these atomic events, to these uh, macroscopic, mechanical, and the physical properties. So, for many hydrogels uh, containing carbon carbon bonds uh, as the backbone of uh, polymer chains, their polymerization typically starts from these monomers, then to form extreme long chain uh, pathing through each other. So, these entanglements actually is, uh, seem to be inevitable unless you dramatically increase this cross intensity. But in that case, the gel becomes super brittle. Uh, alternatively, the polymerization for hydrogel can start with the polymers instead of monomers. And the example including PEG or PVA. And in that case, the end group remains active and can still act as the cross link. And by doing so, uh, in the pre-gel state, each polymer expands to some uh, degree. Now, of course, the, the expansion is depending on the polymer condi solvent conditions. And the chain entanglement can be quite negligible in this case, especially when you carefully tune the polymer content below and or around this critical overlap. So we eventually actually select this uh, Tetron AB type of PEG hydro system. So SARC actually brings the material to this field. I stand many of, the, of his papers. And he also shows some new uh, findings in, uh, on the first day symposium. So why this material is unique? So the material actually contains uh, two types of tetron polymers, uh, but the neither of them uh, can react with themselves. So they can uh, only uh, react with each other. So A can only react with B. Okay, that I would be highly beneficial to form a relative ideal structure to uh, with alternating AB type of structure by eliminating uh, cycle loops, but uh, uh, in reality, they are still may contain some cycle loops, and uh, people actually uh, perform simulation to uh, predict this amount of the defects. But we can actually, by further simulation, we can control this amount of these defects to the minimum level. And uh, the three dimensional structure is really actually this is tetrahedron, the same as the diamond. But the difference is in between the nodes for diamond is uh, carbon bonds, but for this uh, hydrogel, is a, a floppy polymer chains. At a small deformation, they're entropy. At a large deformation, they're anthropic volume. So, uh, so, so here's actually the material system, to be sure, is a monodisperse. So ideally, so relatively, is monodisperse. It contains uniform functionality. So functionality refers to the number of chains connected to this, uh, this uh, junction point. And uh, there will be a very small amount of topological defects, and more important, uh, there will be no chain entanglements. So another interesting point is the defect tunability of the system. So the material actually, the, the uh, one type of the polymer is uh, uh, any group is M matrix group. And actually is uh, tend to uh, hydrolyze. They tend to degrade. So that actually actually give the uh, tunable way to control the reaction efficiency or connectivity of the systems. Uh, 
uh, once you are able to actually make this uh, group hydrolyzed by tuning this either pH value or tuning this hydrolysis time. Uh, and the, uh, so the, the fraction of the, uh, this, uh, uh, actually the dongle chains actually, they can be formed different orders. So depending on the number of chains connected to this uh, junction point, they can be first order, second order, third order, fourth order. So we, by following uh, their papers, we can also actually uh, quantify the number of these kind of defects at a different uh, uh, reaction efficiency. So here's the results. We start to measure fracture toughness and uh, fatigue threshold. And uh, so this is the ratio of these two quantities. We can see, uh, we can see, so this uh, two normalized quantity is uh, uh, nearly maintained as a uh, one, even when the defects is uh, quite large, is uh, the, the, uh, the reaction efficiency is as low as a 0.5, uh, this kind is still as uh, one. And uh, we also have some other experimental observations. We find uh, actually the crack, so when we do the fatigue test, uh, if uh, uh, you apply a low G, the crack does not propagate at all. And we also check this force. There is no reduction force. And uh, if you uh, infer the increase of the load upon critical value, you see a rapid crack propagation. You won't see this progressive propagation. And uh, this critical actually is so close to this fracture point. Okay, these I, I think there's evidence to show, to justify gamma equal to gamma zero. Uh, there's other data. We also show the material is uh, actually is literally has no hysteresis, at least from this curve. Uh, the, this material actually contains moderate amount of dangling chains. And the material is also uh, has, uh, has no rate of dependence uh, for both the stress level, shear modulus, and the fracture toughness. So the last question uh, part I would like to cover in this talk is, um, so now we have a material system. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we have a material system, but the, the purpose of a material system is to inform new understandings. So now our understanding is, uh, can we have some new understanding for this gamma zero? So classic understanding of the polymers they back to late Thomas. So picture basic idea is, uh, once the material fractures, so a single layer polymer uh, uh, provides this, uh, uh, this energy, intrinsic fraction energy. Uh, but there are actually, there are two uh, limitations uh, actually is indicated by recent experiments. So one is that they indicate is uh, the fatigue threshold is, uh, has been underestimated. The other one actually is they fail to account for this uh, topological defects. So we recently actually proposed a model. Uh, so actually trying to address these two limitations. So there are two central ideas behind this model. So one is uh, we trying to account for, uh, to show that uh, we calculate the energy contributed by adjacent layers. So then, uh, so it's not just by single layer. Actually, it's around adjacent layer, they can also contribute this uh, gamma zero. The second effect the idea is when the press out propagates, uh, they may fracture different kind of uh, defects, and then you can calculate their contribution to the toughness. So these are eventually our formula. So there are two contributions. One is uh, toughening due to the uh, this. Uh, 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 in uh, this uh, adjacent layers, the other weakened, weakened because due to this uh, in, uh, active chains by dumping chains. I think I run out of time. So here's our uh, data. So we can see the more is the experimental validation, but more important, I, I would like to say is the fundamental application of this material system. We show this uh, comparison for fatigue threshold between our model and the experiment. So to summarize, uh, we are actually interested on this dimension parameter. Uh, we should uh, report uh, uh, Magnetism for new uh, uh, low heat system material, and we also report a material system have the identical fracture toughness and the fatigue transport. So I'd like to thank uh, Professor Xuan He Zhao, Dong Chang, Jia Hua, who uh, both of them actually contributed to experiment uh, materials and the calculation. Uh, thank you for your attention and welcome for any questions you may have. All right. Uh, thank you, Xiaoting. You may unshare your screen. Sure. And um, we are uh, exactly on time. So uh, let me propose uh, we move on. And uh, I know Cheng Hai and Ray has to have questions and the shouting, I, I, I'm pretty sure you will stay to the end the panel discussion. Sure. So uh, you can either type the answers to Cheng Hai's question already, or we can leave it to our more fruitful discussions later. All right. So, okay. okay. So let us move on to the second speaker.
Uh, second speaker is Professor Bruce Lee from Michigan Tech University. And uh, okay, so already mm, he's going to talk about smart adhesive hydrogel based on muscle adhesive.